Hi everyone, it's John back with another podcast and today I wanted to talk about not judging ourselves too harshly. Perhaps it's it's better to think of it in a way that you should judge yourself fairly because all those things external to your environment, external to you, will happen regardless of anything that you do. So if you're on a martial arts journey or self-improvement journey or whatever journey it is and you're not getting a good night's sleep maybe for a few nights or you had a couple of beers where normally you drink water or you were staying up till two o'clock in the morning on watch, watching stuff on the internet when you would have been in bed or you you know skipped work for a day or whatever it might be I think the the key to that is not to beat yourself up too hard because as long as it's not habit for me then that's fine in my opinion I as a martial art artist will still eat chocolate I will still eat crisps I will still have the odd beer I will skip training on, on some days because for a very simple reason most days I am training most of the days I'm in the zone most of days five to six days a week I am focused on what I need to do and my to-do list is rather long and the danger with listing things that you have to do is that there will always be more things that creep onto that list one of the books I read many years ago was uh, a book called First Things First by uh, an American, uh, Stephen Covey. I think it was Stephen C. Covey or Stephen J. Covey, but it was a really good book about how you prioritize things, how you put things in quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. And his uh, idea was that you had to spend most of your time in quadrant two um, and you know there were things like quadrant one which were urgent uh, and important and there were things like they were urgent but not important or important but urgent you know things like that an important but urgent uh, example would have been the phone rings so you think I should answer that high level of importance you answer it and it turns out that it's not your mom or your girlfriend or your daughter or son or work colleague that you needed to speak to uh, but just some random uh, telemarketing call that you didn't need um, and it, it makes you plan things uh, quite systematically so if you don't know that book it, it, it is uh, I mean a lot of people on YouTube will be American viewers and listeners so uh, they'll be aware of that book or aware of the of the author um, for British people maybe not so much but I would recommend um, the book and he also wrote a more famous book which, which was called the, the seven habits of uh, highly effective people and there's no doubt that a lot of the principles are sound and do work so when you're missing a day when you're missing a, a project you know it's it's hard for for me to say as someone who works for himself how much importance you should attach to it only, only you know um, that really and while you're doing all these things that all these uh, self-improvement goals um, life is happening um, there are things that you have to attend to that can blow up all the time and they can be a real time suck and a real energy suck on you so um, when I get a bit frustrated with things that I'm not as, as forward with as I would like to be I know it's because I'm not seeing growth in those areas but that that is okay because in my head the growth is coming because I'm on that path because everything I do is moving me towards uh, those those particular goals if those goals 
are incompatible with my overall objectives. If those goals have hit a, a bump and they can't get over the bump and I leave them for a bit and then go back to them and I, I change my approach maybe and the bump remains, then maybe it's not going to work and I have to call that one. That's sensible. You know, sometimes people say, oh, you were so close. All you had to do was push on through. But sometimes you get to a point where it's not going to work. So you look at the other goals that you've got aligned up and you will make sure and steady progress on them. So some of them you'll make more progress on. You know, you, your teeth won't fall out because you visit the dentist twice a year. It'll happen when you're not taking care of it twice a day. And it's the same with every other little thing. You know, you shouldn't have to think about, I need a shower. You you know, go and have that shower. Be, be regular, be consistent about it. Um, you shouldn't think, oh, I need to get my hair cut. It should be in place. You know, only you can decide how urgent and important these individual things are. But the ones that are um, important but not urgent, those are the quality of life things. Those are the, the quadrant two planning that Stephen Covey was uh, talking about in his book, uh, First Things First. So, if you end up... Um, beating yourself up, it's not the best use of your time, it's actually going to set you back. And we've all done it, we've, we've all reached those points where, you know, you wonder where where you're going to make a breakthrough or when it's going to happen, when you're going to get that great job. And I think it was Chris Rock says, you know, there are jobs and there, there are careers and um, for those of you who have jobs, you probably think, God, you know, I want something better. So you go and chase a career. And you'll find that when you've got a career, this is what Chris Rock said, when you've got a career, uh, you don't know where the time goes. It goes so fast. When you've got a job, you can't wait for the time to, to uh, pass over. So really need to look at that, whatever age you are, whether you're 16, 26, 36, 46 or, or beyond, there's always better ways to manage your time. But in my view, it won't get better by beating yourself over the head about it. Whatever you did the day before, um, here's something I do, most again, most days, before I go to bed I ask myself, have I done all I could have done with my day? Have I done my best? And if the answer is yes, whether it's a broad yes, or it's a firm yes, or it's a highly committed yes, then I'm okay with that, I'm happy with that, and then I can approach the next day thinking, and guess what, tomorrow I'm going to do the same. Because those consistent approaches will get you to um, that, that goal. And... Um, it's like one of the other things I do writing. If if I can't make headway on a draft, it doesn't necessarily mean I give up on it, but I might go and work on something else, or I might do something else entirely. It might be the story's way of telling me you need to go and re research your subject, or you need to reevaluate it a little bit more, or you need to take a break from it because you're so close to the project. You can't see it objectively. And, you know, when you're writing, you're telling yourself the story first. And then when you rewrite it, you're telling it with others in mind. In the martial arts context, when you're training, you're training for yourself. And when you're sparring, you're sparring with others in mind. You're telling them a different story, but hopefully one that... They can't guess, but you know the plot line, you know the outcome, you know the characters, you know who gets knocked out or knocked down, it's not you, right? So, you miss a day, you miss a lesson, you miss training, you don't do those sit-ups one, two, three days a week. 
following week, week you do four or five days training to make up and historically that's that's how I approached uh, my personal teaching because if a student missed a lesson uh, there's there's lots of schools that would say you are paying for that lesson no matter what it's not up to me to schedule time for someone else I schedule that hour for you that hour is to be paid by you and I'm not gonna ask another student to fill that time instructors will say that and I broadly support it um, but I also live in the real world and I know that um, people have all sorts of commitments going on so I can't ask them to be so committed to me that they drop everything else it all comes back to that quadrant planning what is important to them and what level of uh, importance do they attach to that training what's going to be the impact let's call it the negative impact of them not training can certainly get away with it for a week maybe two but then after that they really need to look at it uh, I've always been of the, the view that if they did their training uh, once a week then they could do whatever the hell else wanted <laughs> for the rest of the week um, for some training twice or three times a week that's that's okay they're gonna make quicker progress in the syllabus that's just how it is um, so we don't beat ourselves up over it because that doesn't work in, in my opinion it might work in some cultures some countries uh, away from England I don't think it works here life is, is hard enough does it there's enough difficulties to deal with on a daily basis sometimes an hourly basis um, but broadly be hard be focused find that growth that is within you but you haven't you know pulled it out just yet it's there and you will make the breakthrough on those goals and if you don't make that breakthrough I kind of feel that that goal wasn't meant for you wasn't aligned to your higher purpose and your overall mission the things that you wanted to do uh, with your life and not everyone has to be president or king or top of the charts or world boxing champion or top of the, the bookseller lists or winner of the Nobel Peace Prize not everyone can do that so you know if, if one of you said well you know my uh, ambition is to invent the world's first time machine it's a hell of a lofty ambition and I'm sure there's plenty of scientists working on it and engineers uh, right now but they may not achieve it in their lifetime but that work that will exist that's a legacy that will continue and at some point someone might just be able to take that forward and he or she will get the credit for inventing the time machine but there'll be a hell of a lot of background work that will have made that happen so as so long as we're doing something positive and well-meaning and that has a good intent we are going to contribute something better to the world and the universe as a whole and there's a universe happening within us as well you know um, we've got to look after those limbs and those blood cells and uh, make sure that we're taking care so I'm gonna wrap that up the takeaway really is if you're doing something every day to further yourself and then sometimes it, you don't take it forward that's okay just be consistent with your consistency don't be consistent with inconsistency because then you will um, reach uh, a, a negative goal it, it won't be what you want to do It'll be like a it'll be one of the smaller things on your to-do list that you'll achieve and you'll be thinking well yes I have done those two or three things but what I really wanted to do was those three or four things at the top that really meant something to me so that's where your time and focus and energy and drive has got to be spent okay wrapping it up have a good day and talk to you again soon